Here we are in one dimensional space. So one dimensional space is just a line that continues in both directions forever. And an object, the simplest object in first dimension is, is a line that, ha that has two boundaries. So we have a boundary here, a point here and a point here, whilst the space of course continues in both directions. second dimension. How do we get there? We do that by taking this, this object from the first dimension, replicating it, and connecting the two points. We end up with a two-dimensional object. Of course it's flat in two dimensions and this simple object is a square. Now, if I were a two-dimensional being, a flat being on this flat sheet of paper, I would not be able to see the other side, the other side of this object. In first dimensions, that's the same. If I were a first dimensional being, I would just be a point and I would not be able to see the other side of, of this object. Oh, by the way, in the second dimension, we have four lines, so four boundaries to this simple object. In third dimension, we do the same thing. We take that square, we replicate the square, another square, and we connect the points. We now have a three-dimensional simple object called a cube and it consists of six boundaries. In three dimensions we have six boundaries and the boundaries are squares. Now let's go to the fourth dimension. The simple object is called a tesseract and we need eight cubes to create that simple object in in the fourth dimension. What we do, we do the same procedure, we take this cube, we replicate it, and there's many ways of replicating it because of course just like in the third dimension this is not really a cube because it's drawn on a flat piece of paper. It is actually a shadow of a, a cube and there's many ways of drawing a cube in two dimensions and this is also what we're doing now in fourth dimension. There's many ways of drawing the shadow of a fourth dimensional cube on a flat piece of paper. One way would be to draw it further to the right and then connecting again the points. But another way would be to to draw a little cube inside the bigger cube. And we're going to that, use that way of doing it um, because that's, that'll be easier for our brain that really cannot easily conceive of fourth dimensional objects to show the movement, to, to meditate on the movement of, of the tesseract. Um, once we have a sensation of being in that fourth dimensional space, we can begin to look at three dimensional objects and perhaps get a sense of what it might be like to see all sides of a, a three dimensional object, whether it's the earth, whether it's a human body, whether it's a leaf on a tree. Uh, there, there is a heightened sense that we can get to through the movement of the tesseract when we let go of all three-dimensional concepts. <laughs>